Speed ramping. It's a very common but exciting video effect, and there's someone who did it better than anyone. Six years ago, Kendrick Lamar came out with his music video for Humble, and like a lot of people, this shot blew me away. Now, this isn't even speed ramping. Not quite. You see, while speed ramping relies on your editing program to ramp up speed of the clip, this shot relied on a huge mechanical arm, and one of these machines usually cost upwards of 50k. That's for the mini model, the base model. And since I have about $3 to my name, a huge question I needed to answer was how can I make this effect myself? You're about to find out. So this video effect is extremely similar to the speed ramping effect. And I knew that was my best bet to make something similar to this shot. But I had to take the speed ramping effect up a notch. Now you've probably seen on IG Reels or TikTok great speed ramping clips of cars, models, a, a grocery cart. I don't know. It's such a cool effect, it can make anything go viral, even a grocery cart. There's a couple key details that can mess up your whole shot, so let's go over how to get the best results for your speed ramp effect. So for actually filming your shot where you're gonna do speed ramping, it's actually very hard to move a camera a far distance smoothly. But I did the shot completely handheld, and here's how I did it. But first, if you're enjoying this video, if you're a videographer, video editor, or content creator, I post a ton of valuable content to make your own videos better, so if you like what you're watching, please subscribe. All right, back to the video. Two key aspects of having a killer speed ramping video is filming with good choreography and enhancing it and editing the right way. So I've used this technique, filming a music video and filming just content. And communication with your subject is super important to nail this shot. While filming this, step one is to rehearse your camera movement. I recommend doing a practice shot for your subject knows where you're gonna move the camera, rehearse it. It's much easier. And to make sure you really nail this, I like to have the movement, the pose happen while I'm moving the camera and have the subject stand relatively still when you're holding the camera stationary. And when you start moving your camera again, that's when they hit the next pose. And speeding it up in post really amplifies that movement, makes it look stylistic. Now, personally, I think the hardest part of this is getting everything in shot. Vertical video, it's pretty hard. Luckily, I had the Automos Ninja 5 to shoot 6K resolution, not just 4K. I noticed shooting vertically, it's hard to get everything in the frame horizontally because it's so thin. So even for a vertical video, shooting horizontal was really useful. Another thing that's hard is when you're moving the camera up and tilting it down. That part was tricky. So once you rehearse the poses with the subject and the camera movement, knock down the composition, get everything in frame, you're gonna wanna leave a lot of space and headroom in your video while filming. This is really important because in the next step, bring it into your editing program, that space is gonna be used. Here's how to do the effect. The first step is for you to make your speed ramping adjustments. Do this by right clicking your clip, go to show clip keyframes, time remapping, speed. Right click to add your keyframes and drag up and increase your speed when your subject moves. Whatever speed looks best and change the clip back to 100% or even 40% speed to slow down when the subject poses. Click and drag here to ease in and ease out of the different speeds. Now nest the clip and it's time to stabilize your video. So you're gonna lose some space and resolution when you apply warp stabilizer. So if you can, shoot at a higher resolution than you're uploading. Like I said, total game changer, the Ninja 5, shooting 6K ProRes RAW, because being able to shoot higher than 4K is just super useful. First thing I did, applied warp stabilizer, tuned it for the best results. Number two, I used guidelines in my editing program to keyframe so the middle of my frame was locked on the subject's eye. So that's kind of like that Beats commercial effect where it's completely locked in the center of frame. Really cool effect. And third thing, adding a digital zoom, fast one, takes it to another level. Having a practical camera movement and a digital zoom, and that's the sauce. So when you're editing, you kind of zoom in and out with every pose. So first pose, I zoomed in. Second pose, I zoomed out. That way, each time you get the maximal movement of the camera movement itself, and the digital zoom. And last thing that takes it up to a whole nother level is adding some cinematic sound design, some whooshes, metallic slices. So I have my own with a bunch of collaborators. We made the crescendo pack. I use this for my own content and for my client work. So if you're upgrading your camera gear, but not your sound effects, then look into the crescendo pack. Great for product videography and any other type of cinematic video. And in order to make this shot look its best, it's gotta sound its best. Check out the crescendo pack. The link is in the video description for you to check out. All the sound effects from this video are from the crescendo pack. That way, when I add this dramatic and stylistic camera movement, I complement it with sound design and it looks super professional. And finally, you get your result. All right, that's all for this video. If you wanna make better content or better videos, check out my page, plenty of tutorials to help you out. And don't forget to subscribe. See you on the next video. Cheers.